This is episode H, Hurry Kills Relationships with Sherry and Ken Fernandes. Feeling connected is a basic human need, as vital as air, water, and food. I'm here to talk about bridging the gap between ourselves, our friends and family, life partners, and anyone we come in contact with so we can more fully experience connection. Hey friend, thank you for joining me on the podcast today and spending some of your precious time with me. Time is a finite resource for sure, and we'll be talking a lot about that in today's episode. My guests today are Sherry and Ken Fernandes. You might recognize the name Sherry Fernandes because she is one of my sponsors. Sherry is the author of the book Life Mastery, Personal Progression Toward an Infinite Potential, which just came out on audiobook. Give it a listen today. Her book is amazing because she not only tells you why and what to change in your life, but how. A quote from her book states, There are books, programs, and speakers that are excellent at motivation. What is unique about the Life Mastery Program is how it provides the tools needed to turn motivation into results in every area of life. This episode is also sponsored by Life Unlimited Coaching. They help busy moms ditch fad diets for good. Follow them on Facebook or go to lifeunlimitedpro.com to learn more. And now, on to my interview with Sherry and Ken. Thank you for joining me. I really appreciate you giving me some of your time. (sighs) For my listeners, this concept of hurry kills relationships comes from the book by John Mark Comer called The Ruthless Elimination of Hurry. Have you guys read that or heard of it? I I haven't. Yeah, Uh, No, that's okay. I hadn't heard of it either until book club. Yeah, and he just talks about how hurry has become a problem in our fast-paced world and why, and then he goes into how to solve it. And he's he's a Christian. I can't remember what denomination, but he has some really good points and relates it to the life of Christ and how Christ was always willing to serve people, even though he was probably in a hurry too, you know, he, but he never hesitated to stop and help those that needed it. Anyway, how have you and Ken made time for each other over the years? One thing, we have been always extremely jealous of our time together. Like we, every in the evenings, for ever since we were married, kids went to bed early when they were little. And like 7.30, I mean early. (laughs) And we had the evenings. We've always been on one, dated once or twice a week. Well, I think for me, doing the things that, that I need to do every day. I mean, I have a list of things that I do daily. I have this routine and I always do them early in the day. Mm. So always 99% of the time I get up and get those things done. I do my work. And at the end of the day, all that stuff is done so that we then have that, that time, those few hours in the evening where we have that time together, where we don't have to go off and they say occasionally we might have to, but for the most part, we try to get everything done early in the day. For me, it works better that way because I'm much fresher early in the day to do the things that take a lot more. You don't need to be fresh for me. Yeah, for my life. <laughs> I don't know how good that. But no, that's true. You know, when we just, we call it a work day. And, you know, at the end of the day, we're like, we just call it. This is, even now, even though we're retired, we still have very, lots of projects and things going on. And because we're retired and we spend so much time together, it'd be really tempting to just say, well, I'm just going to work a little longer day. I'm going to do these projects tonight instead. But we don't do it. We lo- really actually we really like our time. Yeah, anyway. we so do. We don't, it was not that much of a sacrifice. We've been doing it for 45 years. So, you know, yeah. it's just yeah, what we've we been do. married 45 years next month. So, and we've been doing it since we got married. We've yeah. been really good. At, uh, Ken's always been really good at coming home from work, even though we had our own business. He was home at, I mean, he's home after six or something. He wasn't home by six. I knew something was wrong. You mm. know, I started worried, but he was always home between 5 30 and six and, and uh, fine with the kids and time with me. He liked to come home. So, yeah, it's just being able to put things in departments. So when I get home, I'm done with work. Yeah, and it was a little frustration for Sherry for a number of years when she'd come out to work and couldn't really get my attention because when I go to work, I'm focused on work. And so, but I told her one day she got a little upset. I said, "It's just who I am. That's why I'm good at what I do. When I come home, I don't bring work home with me, and I give you all my attention." And so. I can't be in one place and not that I don't or can't. It's just easier for me to do it that way. 
Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, and that reminds me of a quote when you said the word attention. Mary Oliver said attention is the beginning of devotion. And I really like that because like you said, you kind of put it into compartments and once you're with Sherry, then your attention's all on her. And once you're at work, it's at work. And so that's a good way to separate it and, and keep those straight. I'm reading a book by called The Power of Fun by Catherine Price. She's the one that wrote uh, How to Break Up With Your Phone. Mm. Anyway, she said that the most valuable thing that we have, we talk about being our time, but it's actually our attention. Mm. That is what we give our attention to. I like that. Yeah. And you answered a few questions in there for me too, when you guys were talking, I wondered how long you've been married. And so 45 years, that's awesome. And I'm grateful to have you on the podcast because you have a seasoned relationship that you're <laughs> one that has. We know people talk about how uh, the ups and downs of marriage or did you have some, how, how hard work it is or whatever. And, Obviously, we didn't, every day wasn't just a piece of cake. We had some, you know, little bumps or something, but they were like really little. Like we just like being married, like each other, and we've never felt like it was some kind of a burden or or something we had to work out. We just we like yeah, being married, so yeah. And I can tell you guys have your priorities straight because as you were talking before too, you were talking about priorities, getting your work done and then having that time for each other. And then it sounds like now too, just marriage is just a priority in your life and that's how you live. So that's really neat and something great to aspire to. So what do you feel happens to love when we're in a hurry? Being in a hurry is really kind of self-centered, isn't it? I mean, it's mm. like all about me. It's kind of self-absorbed. I'm all about me. I have to get here. I have to do this. I have to do this. Yeah. And I find that sometimes I'm so busy. I've got all these things I've got to do today and I don't stop and remember. Ken also has a lot of things he has to do today too. They're just, they're his priorities, you know, but yeah, I think that's one reason why when we're rushed, we're just thinking about us. Yeah. That's really good. Yeah. I'll share the quote from the book that reminded me of this topic. So it says, hurry kills relationships. Love takes time. Hurry doesn't have it. It kills joy, gratitude, appreciation. People in a rush don't have time to enter the goodness of the moment. It kills wisdom. Wisdom is born in the quiet, in the slow. So, yeah, I really like your point there, too, that hurry is selfish. You are worried about what's happening and what you need to do and what needs to get done. So, yeah, just slowing down. Can I say something about that? Yeah, for sure. Excuse me. uh, I'm kind of a hurried person. Mm -hmm. Uh, I live my life that way. I move really quickly efficiently lot, right <laughs> efficiently but i mean i move when i move i move but i do that for a reason is because i like my freedom mm. and if i can get a lot done in a day in my work day by working really quick and fast and being efficient that gives me more freedom to spend good time that i can be with my family my wife I like my leisure time too. So I work hard. So I I have a hard time separating that to say, now I do think it's important to slow down a little bit and I'm trying to be better, uh, get better at doing that to slow down and be in the moment. Uh, But so it's a little bit of a kind of a fine line to divide that to say, okay, slow down. Well, if I slow down, it's going to take me longer to get the work done and that leaves less time to spend with my wife. So, yeah, that's a yeah, good point too. What's going on in your head, you know, like Ken <clears throat> is pretty focused and he, so when he goes about it, he's not, I don't think of him as hurried. He just does things quickly and fast, but not rushed. I think that's a different thing. That rush thing, some a feeling of in, stress and intense and I've got to get this done. And that kind of a, in, in, you know, is that, you know what I mean? It's more of an internal thing that I think he just is efficient and he moves and he gets things done and he's focused and he's focused. Yeah, so that's different. I think what I know, I know that when I was a young mother and we had one point, we had five of our six kids home and they ranged from preschool to through the end of high school. And Ken was the bishop and I was teaching seminary and we had all these sports and dance lessons and everybody's in a ton of stuff. We was super, super busy. And so I'm teaching seminary in the morning and I rem- and then I'd go home and I'd exercise. I'd go for a walk or bike ride. But I would think if I, um, I can do these things I've got to do and be stressed and rushed or I can do them and just not be stressed and just, just do them without the stress. You're not going to get done any quicker. 
by being all stressed and I bet it's worse, right? And mm-hmm. you get a lot of fallout. <laughs> a lot of things that maybe you didn't notice, you should have noticed because you're all thinking about you. But anyway, I don't know, I didn't always master it, you know, by any means. And still sometimes I let the rushy thing get a hold of me. But you can do things rushed or in hurried, or you can just do them and be in the moment, like Ken said. Yeah, it's true. And yeah, I understand what you're saying too, Ken, and that's a good point. I think it comes down to intentions and maybe where you're hurrying or why you're hurrying or things like that. Because I know for me, if we're trying to go somewhere and we're late or we don't have all our things together, it's like, oh, you're snapping at each other or you're just trying to just, you know, really quickly get everything together. And then it causes meltdowns and all the things with the kids, you know, so it's like either planning beforehand or like you said, getting all your work done beforehand and then having the time to do what you need to do. And I know it's, again, not always possible to just be on time everywhere and so intentional, you know, but I think just remembering to what you can do to prepare ahead of time or reasons why it's caused such a thing, or even that being late is okay sometimes, you know, and it's more important to focus on the relationship if something is in the way. So, yeah. 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 So, I'm sure you've heard that before. Love is spelled time, you know, (laughs) T-I-M-E. And um, why do you think that is? I know that, and I know I've taught this for all my life and with people I've worked with, but relationships, but either with yourself, with God, with your spouse, with your kids, they grow on time. That's the, they need time. They just need to have time. You can't, um, you can't have a good relationship without spending time. You can't have a good relationship without your kids without time. A relationship with God requires time on our knees and study, right? All those things. You just you just can't build relationships without time. That's just what it takes. There's yeah. no shortcuts to that. Mm-hmm. Well, there's so many things in the world we live in today that can interrupt our our conversation, our time together. Uh, you know, cell phones are a good example of that. But it's just it's life, and it's hard when you're raising children. You know what it's like, and you you mm-hmm. raise kids and and you're trying to find time for your relationship but sherry and i always worked really hard at that we knew people who would just the kids would be up until they went to bed that wasn't our way you know we always made sure that we put them to bed a couple hours before we went to bed um you know when they're teenagers that changes a little bit when they were teenagers we got a room kind of a room with another room on it and we would just we had it kick them out deliberately with it on the separate sides of the house and we like you're yeah, there. Yeah, we are we're here. here. Yeah, so <laughs> yeah. If somebody's bleeding or something, come get us. Otherwise, right. we go mm-hmm. check on it. They were friends, of course. We could just leave them. But we had our. We still made sure we had our own space. It just had to be. We just couldn't get them to go to bed. Those darn kids. Yeah. <laughs> Teenagers. Yeah. Well, that's so great. Yeah, I really appreciate this conversation. I feel like it's it's good to hear your perspectives and to see how your love has grown over time. That's really, that's really neat. Well, can I make a, just a quick comment on that? I'm sorry to interrupt no, you. No, you're great. But you know, it, it, we've been married 45 years and you think, you know, 45 years, you guys should have this figured out. But <laughs> the reality is, is we don't, and mm-hmm. I don't, but I've learned recently, I've really worked hard on being, you know, like this being in the moment, right? Mm-hmm. So often my mind is going and I'm thinking about, things whatever it is Mm -hmm. and sherry might be having a conversation with me and i'm not really focused on what she's saying my mind i'm listening and saying "Uh uh uh-huh kind of half listening half thinking about what i'm thinking about so what i'm working on is making sure that when sherry starts talking and a good way for me to do it is to stop what i'm doing whatever i'm doing and stop it and focus on her look at her Mm -hmm. and listen to what she's saying so that I can really hear. So if I'm maybe in all the years that we've been together, I've only really been present maybe half the time. Mm. Well, if I can be more present in the time that we're together, then that would be really good quality time. And I understand her better. I'm really listening to her. And she doesn't get frustrated when she says, well, I already told you that. Mm -hmm. I don't remember. (laughs) Yeah. That's a really good point because you really could spend all day with someone but not really be there entirely. And so, yeah, it brings a new meaning to the word quality time. You're actually giving them that that time that's meaningful, that is, you know, fully attentive and listening. And it's hard. It's 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 hard. Yeah, I yes. mean, because we've it's just who I've been my whole life. Right. And now I've got to be focused 
And it's like anything, it, it takes time and practice and work. And some days I think, oh, I missed that. I came in have to do this conversation. Yeah, and I think we can all relate to that too, because the world certainly doesn't help. You know, you mentioned cell phones and just all the things going on, multitasking and, you know, all the things that are vying for our attention. So it's true. It's easy to fall into that trap. What a good reminder to get out of it. Yes. Um, do you have any other quotes or thoughts on the subject or? Thinking about something on the, about the cell phone thing again from Catherine Price's book about uh, the power of fun. But she said the studies have shown that merely having a cell phone on the table when you're having a conversation with somebody lessens the, in the um, depth of the conversation. Isn't that interesting? Like just the cell phone, just the presence. It doesn't, we have to look at it or anything. Wow. Just the fact that sitting on the table diminishes the depth of the, the conversation. So it really guarding our attention is a really, a, it's a, we're both working on that, but it's a, it's a lot of work it, it, just because we're human. And then of course, in this uh, world with all the technology, and the phones and the screens and stuff that are literally designed to get our attention. Yes, that's true. I think I saw on Facebook recently that you said that you had your cell phone put away or something until you were ready to be there and, you know, oh, you survived, you know, like, oh, heaven forbid, you know, you leave your cell phone I hear something about that, actually. Yes, for sure. That's a good message. I think this is a good message. It's kind of my thing right now is I see the damage uh, that cell phones are doing to our attention span to our relationships, to depression, anxiety, because nobody's happy when they're on their cell phone. Not really, right? Not maybe it's a cute picture of a kid or something for a split second, but scrolling through, you know, social media doesn't make anybody really happy. Anyway, so it's been on my mind a lot, this this topic about it. But what I did is I decided to put my, um, I don't think I was terribly attached to it, but, you know, I did this Facebook thing a little bit, and it gets everybody. Yeah. But I turned my phone off. I put action on airplane mode. That works best for me on airplane mode just before I go to bed because the tendency is first thing in the morning, even though I keep it in another room, I get in my office and I, I see what, what happened overnight, right? So it's on airplane mode, nothing happened, nothing to get through. And then I do, you know, I do my scriptures, meditation, my journal writing, my affirmations, those type of things. And then, I, then I'll turn my phone on and see if there's any messages. And you know what? Two things. First of all, I found out I, I don't get to miss anything. And second of all, um, it's made me less attached to my phone i'm much less likely to look at it and try to get that little dopamine zing because somebody's texted me right yeah so those two things have been it really may tell less pull i think the reason the phone has less pull is because it's trying to distract us from the important things the important things are all done so it's like you know my brain is not having any reason to go there but anyway as, as a practice i'd really recommend yeah, that's so good. And it, it's as if you took it right out of the book because the author talks about that too in this ruthless little elimination of her. You know, it's it's a good thing to talk about because, you know, it's cell phones haven't been around forever. And so now that it, we're in this day and age, we're realizing what damage they can do and how it's affecting our relationship. So yeah, that's such a great reminder. Another thing he talked about in the book too was just simplicity because he said, the more things you buy, the more time that takes away from you, whether it's having to maintain the new thing that you bought or just spending time with the thing that you bought, you know? And so I think just really dialing it down back to your relationship and you two and just being present, like you said, and just focusing on the simple love that you have in, with each other. So. Well, another side of that, Jen, though, is, yeah, you know, I'll totally agree about having things, you know, because everything needs painting, greasing, storing. Yes. Mm -hmm. cleaning 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 and now picking up maintaining it's just and we do have a few toys that are pretty simple we have bikes and kayaks that's, <laughs> but we have things that we do together yes and going out and doing things together is super important building memories together spending time out not just sitting on the couch holding hands but you go out and do things we true we walk twice once or twice a day we work out together we ride bikes together we he goes fishing by himself, but only in his mind, because he only goes a couple times a year. I do <laughs> it a lot. <laughs> yes, experiences. <laughs> That's so good. Our toys are, um, we we do our toys are designed for us to do something together with. Yes. No, one of us doesn't have something that we're into that the other one isn't doing like that toy wise. I love that. Yeah, it gives a a, a purpose together. Yes. Yes. Uh, was there something else you wanted to add, Ken? It just looked like you were going to say something. But. Well, you asked a question about quotes on time. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And I have one. This is my favorite time quote. It doesn't really pertain to what we've 
been talking okay. about. I love the quote. And I thought, well, maybe you want to use it sometime. Yeah. But it's by Earl Nightingale. And he said, never give up on a dream or a goal because of the time it will take to accomplish it. The time will pass anyway. Mm. And I just think that's, you know, it's one of those things that sometimes we say, oh, that's going to take too long. I'm not going to do it. And then two years later, we say, man, if I'd have just done that, I'd be, I'd have it now, right? Yeah. And so I just think, and maybe relationships are that way too. You know, today is now, you know, start now, uh, whatever you're doing, whatever your goals are. Uh, today's the day to start. Don't put it off Yeah. for whatever reason, because you've been doing that. That's the reason you're in that position. You've been doing it for years and years, putting it off, putting it off. Uh, you know, you got to start today, whether it's money that you want to start saving for your retirement or exercise and eating better so that you can be healthier or spending more time together. Yeah, yes. today. I love it. That's a great one. Yes. Okay. Well, thank you for your time. I really appreciate it. I hope you guys are doing well. It's good to see you. Yeah, it's good, <laughs> good to, see to see you. you Just to recap what we both learned, guard your time together, get your work done, and then cherish the time alone together. Be present. Attention is the beginning of devotion. Give your undivided attention to your partner. Hurry is self-absorbed. Love takes time. Think about your intentions. There's no shortcut to spending quality time together. And finally, start investing in your relationship today. Thank you for joining me on the podcast this week. Remember to subscribe, rate, review, share this with a friend, and check in again next week. A few years ago, I was feeling anxious and overwhelmed. Therapy helped me get through that time by allowing me to share my problems with someone who could view them objectively and help me change my perspective. If you're going through a season of depression, stress, anxiety, or overwhelm, this episode's sponsor, BetterHelp, is a great resource. BetterHelp is online therapy you can access from the comfort and convenience of your own home. All you do is fill out a questionnaire and you'll be matched with a therapist in as little as 48 hours. Your specific needs will be addressed, and if it's not a good fit, you can request a new therapist at any time. Get 10% off your first month by visiting betterhelp.com slash A is for adversity. That's betterhelp.com slash A is for adversity.